Well, I think I'll, I'll, I'll look back as uh, the, the lad from Erdington um, that come through the youth team and um, had a dream of playing for Aston Villa. And um, I'll look back and think I made a lot of mistakes, which normal people, everyone does. And I'll look back and think I fulfilled um, a dream, you know, and I've left with records. Yeah, I think Aston Villa is one of the, the, the greatest clubs in English football. Um, the history the club's got. You look at the fans we get. It's a Premiership club, you know. Isaac Bonalahor, Villa on the prowl. They've got a second. Gabby Bonalahor. First time toss. There was a lot of injuries and illnesses with strikers that were available then and I remember David O'Leary telling me that I'll be starting, you know, nervous, going into the game, thinking um, this is my chance, you know, to do well and um, hopefully get a goal and then I remember the game, we were getting a, a lesson by Everton and um, I remember Lee Hendry putting me through and then taking a quick shot and scoring a goal and uh, once the ball went in the net I couldn't even believe it myself that it had gone in. It was a bit of shock going through me. Early on in that season I'd had a few loan spells that didn't go too well at um, Watford and Sheffield Wednesday. So to come back I didn't feel like I'd have got the chance straight away in the first team. So to get that call um, it shows that you need that look in football to get your break sometimes. And um, when the goal went in, I was thinking to myself, so excited to score, but not to over celebrate because obviously we're getting a good hiding from Everton. Yeah, I remember that game. It was a great atmosphere at Villa Park. I think um, it was that Maisie run by Ashley Young, wasn't it? And then he shot, and I put my foot out and scored. Another goal that like I enjoyed as well because Chelsea, big team at the time. Aston Young, the way he dribb dribbled with the ball, um, you don't really see that too often anymore. The way he could chop defenders, both the sort of jokers of the training ground. You know, we used to play pranks on a lot of teammates. We took that relationship into a game. We'd always know where each other would be. We'd always be able to find maybe that ball and that cross. So yeah, I enjoyed that relationship. I think it was when Gary Cale scored that overhead kick, um, bicycle kick, the way everyone celebrated in the whole end. I think I was on the bench when he scored. Um, we all ran over and celebrated. So I could understand then what the game meant to the fans and how much it meant to the players and everyone associated with Aston Villa. So once I scored in St Andrews, just scoring the, at their ground, there was no better feeling, to be honest, at such a young age as well. I was on the post, wasn't I, for the, the corner, and um, when Ridgewell headed it, I thought, this can't go in. So obviously I've um, put a foot out and cleared it off the line. And I was thinking to myself, we can't lose this game, you know what I mean? It, that means that much to the fans, that it's a game that you just do not lose. It's not worth um, living in the city afterwards if you lose that game. And um, to go on in the other end and score so, so quickly after doing that, I don't think you can... Um, describe the emotion, the adrenaline that you go through, especially when you see how much it means to the fans, celebrating, jumping onto the pitch, you know, it's just, yeah, one of the best moments in my career, definitely. In any derby, if you've got players that are from the area, the, the local lads, it, um, they know what it's about, they know what it's around, what happens around the area, what fans, family members who are fans, what it means to them, and the competition between both clubs, how um, they dislike each other that much and how much Aston Villa do not want to lose to Birmingham City. 
So I think going into the game, that's in your mind and you're thinking like, we do not lose, whatever happens, you do not lose to this team. I remember before the game, we were, we were so confident with the group of players that we had and we, we just knew that we were going to win the game, if that makes sense and that, that's a great feeling to have in football, going out there knowing you're going to win and we had that and it was a question of who scores first really, um, between the, the team and then the teammates. So to finally get my, my goal, the last goal in the game, you see by the celebration, I was over the moon. I think John Carew and myself, we had the best partnership um, for me. I mean, we, we both fed off each other. It was a pleasure to play with him, the way we bullied defenders. I think even in training, no one wanted to defend against John. And on a match day, the way he played. And even when you first come, I remember, it was sort of a swap deal, wasn't it, for Barros? It was like, like what a great player at Valencia and um, Leon. So he was one of the best strikers um, and a partnership have with and I still speak to him now which is good, still keep in contact. Obviously to come into that season we had a good pre-season and it was quite a tough game for the first half of the game, first 60 minutes and I remember I wasn't having um, too much joy against um, the Man City defence and then out of nowhere it was like goal, goal, goal. Everyone's dream is to get a hat trick, and that was my first hat trick. So, yeah, and this is the perfect hat trick as well. So, I enjoyed that. Ladies and gentlemen, the time has arrived. Will you please welcome the Arsenal and Aston Villa? Obviously, um, I supported Aston Villa, but I had a soft spot for Arsenal because of um, how they played with the, the likes of Cherry Henry, Robert Perez. again and get the win. Even to this day, you know, if I'm around London, I still get Arsenal fans that bring it up. You know, the way the goal went in, the way I out sprinted Gallas, I still get that to today. Great defender William Gallas, um, he was another tough one to play against, but I still have that memory, I've got good memories against him. The team we had then, the likes of Asti Young, Gareth Barry, Milner, Downing, we, we were going to, into every game thinking we can get a result here, home or away. And we had the same mentality against Man United in that game. And I think we deserved the win. I don't think he'd get any better than um, Gareth Barry. I think even Villa fans will say the same. Um, how many games he's played for um, Villa. I think people still wouldn't believe the amount. And I think his quality on the ball was for me. You'd never give the ball away, training in a game. He'd make them runs from the centre and he'd make it easier for the strikers because he'd put the ball on your plate. So I think for me, he'd possibly be the best player I've played with at Aston Villa. so much to the fans and history to make that um, win. I think any, any goal you scored um, for Aston Villa, was you had that, that feeling, but to score in a stadium like Old Trafford, especially the team that they had at that time. I 
I think that's up there one of the best. Fans were so loud and so up for the game and that, that helped us on the pitch to get the result. And then I remember after the game, all the players celebrating, we're going to Wembley. So it was a great feeling. Milner hits it, it's another one! Four goals for Villa! Milner with the drive! Yeah, I remember that as well. Milner shot, didn't he? And he come off me and I was like, that's my goal. You know, you can't take that away from me. Yeah, it was one of my cheekiest goals. I think with, with Martin, I think it was, even if, say, you had a bad game and you lost the game, he'd give you a chance to pull it right the next game. And that's what the players did. We'd go and get a result because we'd have that backing from the manager. And I think he was great with the players, the way he was on, on the touchline, you know, the passion he had whenever we scored or he was one of the best managers I'd say. They got the best out of me, definitely. Yeah, I do look back at that that I think that that era was a chance of us getting some silverware. I think it happened a lot so in that three, four years where we should have got some silverware and finished fourth definitely, but um, as happens in football, we were lucky not to, to get into that top four. The man you bid would kick you off the ball, he'd pinch you when the referee isn't looking, he'd grab you. Every time I played against him, there were good battles and um, he was definitely one of the players that tried to get you wound up. So, so today, I still, I still think, how did he not send him off? You know, I think. I think if you ask anyone that played in that game, still couldn't believe it. Because if he'd got sent off, I think he would have won. So he still looked back at that to today. He wasn't having the best of seasons, and there was a lot of pressure on us that game to get a win. I think that win um, would have helped us climb the table a little bit and get the pressure off um, the team. And we can equalising goal, and that one will count. It's Darren Ben with the header. I remember the ball coming in and thinking like, this is my chance to get the winner. I hadn't started the game and I was a bit disappointed. A bottle of That's the winner for Aston Villa! So to get the goal and get the win, you know, the players after the game were buzzing in the changing room, it was sort of pressures off. Still here, Petrov, still one of my closest friends at the moment. I am out of football standings and I think if you look back at the games he played for Aston Villa, the way he could score from anywhere, the way he could switch a ball from one side of the pitch to the other. I think um, a great player for Aston Villa and Celtic. And um, he was missed once he um, left. I just remember we have to win this game. No ifs or buts, we have to go out there and win the game. And I think the atmosphere was great from the fans. They, especially when we got the first goal, and the third, the fourth, it was like we we're going to score every time we got the ball, sort of thing. I think that was the game that I broke the record in, in that game. You know, so that was important for me as well to become the highest um, Premiership goal scorer and even to get the win set us up for the next game. I think it was Norwich away where we won again and then we finished the season on a high. Christian Benteke, the partnership that me, Andy Wyman and Christian had, I think people will forget how good we like played for each other. I, mean, I remember Andy playing on the right, myself on the left, Christian up front and Paul Lambert give us the chance and the, to not just stay out wide, to play where we wanted on the pitch and we had a good partnership. I remember um, I had an injury and I was a doubt for the game to be honest and um, I'd done everything I could to, to get back and it was a bit touch and go at the time so I wasn't um, able to start the game but I remember being involved um, first half it was a bit of a, I think both teams were a bit nervy, it was a bit of a, a scrappy game and I just remember just watching thinking like get me on you know, let me just go and get on and like rough a few players up. And then when I got the call to come on, that's what I did, you know, I thought, let me get on, let me kick a few players and, you know, get the fans um, going. And I think that's what happened. And then, as it was, I think it was fate, the ball dropped to me in the area and went in.
think it was a bit of, you know, this is like a derby. You're not meant to, you know, like the opposite opposition players. They'd give him some, obviously nothing silly, but give him a bit of physical contact. And I think when the fans see that, it gets them up as well. And I think that happened. The fans started to um, make a lot of noise. The players started to to respond from that, and we got the win. And um, I think out of all the the derby goals, I mean that that was my favourite. I think because it was a bit of a frustrating time for me personally um, in the Villa shirt and to come back, you know, and score that goal, I think it meant a lot to me. I think it was a few days before the game and I said to um, the kit man, Ian Paul, I says, um, what can I do um, for my friend who's obviously got the illness which I was very sad about and he said, um, well you can't take your shirt off because you get yellow guarded so he says why don't I do a shirt with um, a tribute to Carl and if you score you um, come over and get it and then obviously lift it up. The next few days before the game was on my mind like do it for your, your good friend you know so you can get a chance to lift that shirt for him and, and when the ball dropped to me in the area and I scored and that's I was thinking no celebrate go get the shirt and then um, show your support for your good friend and I think it meant a lot because I got a lot of messages from Wolves fans as well, which is good to see with the rivalry. And um, I think it meant a lot to him as well. We've got a special job as a footballer, and if we can give back um, stuff back to the community, to charities, um, because they look up to us. And I think the players um, that I've played with over the years, they've been really giving as well to charities, not just myself, but. And I think even Neil Taylor deserves a, a lot of credit as well because he joined me with that trip to Toys R Us for that family. Which it's little things like that that it means a lot to that family and to other um, charities as well. So it's always nice to do that. Even when I hear it now, I hear it everywhere I go and it still sends you know, tingles down my spine and I think I owe a lot to the fans, they've, um, they've stuck by me through my whole career, you know, they've, they've been that 12th man for Aston Villa over the time that I've been here and they've, um, they've meant a lot to me as well and hopefully they'll think back to the, the good memories that I've gave them. Yeah.